think we're live we're live hey happy tuesday besties and bosses how are you all doing how's everyone's week been how's everyone's weekend i had the best weekend i got to see one of my good friends actually our guest on our podcast this week manisha tare who if you listen to one question the podcast i have one question on apologetic questions for unapologetic results our guest this week is also a good friend of mine i've known her from a program we were in gosh we met I think it was eight or nine years ago. So I went Friday. She lives in New Jersey. I live in New York, City, New York City. So I went over. We had dinner together. We got to spend the night. We got to hang out, have a nice morning and walk and breakfast. And then a lovely weekend with my husband here as well. So just feeling feeling all the refilled, refreshed energy and, and good spring, spring vibes. Spring, spring is not a word. Spring vibes over here. I'm very much looking forward to hanging with you. I'm also getting ready for a trip this weekend. I'm going to see my cousin, and we, we call ourselves sister cousins because we're, we're more like sisters than cousins and having kind of a, a weekend retreat with her. So I'm flying out this weekend, so feeling just full of, I don't know, fun getting to see people, energy, and very much excited to hang with you all today and see all of you. So we'd love to hear how you're doing. Today we're going to have a conversation all about, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the CEO mindset that doesn't require you to be high vibe to get big results. I feel like I've probably talked about this concept in some ways before, and I want to break this down really specifically. So I'm sure if you've hung out with me for a second you have probably heard me talk about well let's just even call it how it is i think if you're in the online space you've probably heard a lot of noise about you know you need to be high vibe or have a secret code or be activated or have a certain energy or have a certain mindset or i don't know that someone's like holding the secrets to whatever you need to be able to create big results in your business. And while look, I'm literally a mindset coach. I am a, I work with mindset and strategy. I believe you absolutely need both. My coaching framework is clarity, mindset, strategy, and action. I think mindset is probably 80 to 90% of the results you get. The whole concept of being high vibe is I think kind of toxic and I think can cause a lot of problems and actually misses the whole point of what kind of mindset actually supports you in getting results and in being a business owner that is regulated and gets really big results. So we're gonna talk about that today and hopefully that will be supportive for you. I'm coming from the perspective of both having been in business myself for over seven years, I have made million dollars in the last four years, 700K in the last two years, we make a minimum of 350K a year from a one-on-one coaching model with lots of room to scale things to revenue share. I have supported clients to over the million dollar mark. I work with clients who are brand new and I have supported clients who are making 2 million plus in their business with big teams and everywhere in between. So when I'm sharing these experiences and these philosophies today, this isn't like I just thought this was cool or I read someone's post on Instagram or I'm triggered by someone's post on Instagram. This is really what I'm sharing with you today is based on my my experience, my client's experience. I have a degree in psychology. So that's, I just want to give that preface because you know there is a lot of smoke and mirrors in our online space and I think sometimes there's a lot of context missing. So I'm bringing this to you from that lens. And what we're going to break down today, and please as I'm sharing and going through this, because it's probably probably stuff maybe you've, some of you have heard me talk about before and also probably things where you're like, really Karen, that, that's, that's, the, that's the mindset, that's the thing. So if you have questions, reflections, throw them at me because I always, always want to hear from you. But what we're going to dive into specifically today, I want to talk about the number one, I'm reading these because otherwise I'll forget and I'll make sure we hit them all, but the number one factor that determines sustainable long-time success that everyone can cultivate. So this is a mindset that does not require you to be high vibe and it is, I really think it's the number one, one factor and mindset to focus on and this is a mindset i promise you no matter what your background no matter what kind of trauma no matter what where you're at i promise this is a mindset you can lean into well, i can't promise maybe that's not the wrong thing but i'm pretty darn sure you can the not so positive appearing mindset that's actually rooted in confidence worthiness trust and increases conversions with any strategy you're using and when my clients both love and hate me when i suggest thinking and taking this approach we're going to talk about the truth about coaching that no one wants to tell you but i will happily and proudly share with you and how this will help you leverage the support you're leaning into for bigger results and then one of the big chunks i want to talk about today is what psychology can teach us about mastery and success really what goes into getting big results in business and how you can use this when Form your role as a CEO, how you're showing up, and how you can create the income you want to. So it's really based in 
science and what we know works as well as strategy. So today's going to be more mindset heavy. Of course, this goes without saying, but I feel like I should say this just because of the context of the conversation we're having. Like I said a couple seconds ago, my coaching framework is clarity, mindset, strategy, and action. We're talking mostly mindset today. This does not mean strategy doesn't matter. This does not mean action doesn't matter. I think that can sometimes be the challenge when we're having conversations around mindset or manifesting, which again, I'm a big believer and proponent in, be just because we can't talk about everything in one live stream, but it does feel important to say both are really important and your mindset is really what is going to be the rocket fuel that informs what kind of strategy you choose, how you show up and take action, whether you do or don't stay consistent in your action, right? This is where mindset plays such a big role in your strategy. But again, I'm just going to keep coming back to this. It is not a prerequisite that you be high vibe to get big results in business. In fact, I think sometimes chasing being high vibe, um, and, and look, like, I'm high vibe all the time. I love being high vibe, right? Like there's nothing wrong with that. I'm also not hating on that. But I think sometimes creating this concept that high vibe or positive all the time or feeling a certain kind of activated energy is what creates results is really unsustainable and actually can do more harm than good because then really what you're focused on is chasing and fabricating a perfect feeling, a perfect emotion, a perfect state. And last time I checked, you and I are humans having a human experience. There are days I'm high vibe. There are days as a booked out multi six figure coach that I'm sad, that I'm frustrated, that I'm disappointed, that I, you know, whatever emotion might not be high vibe. And if, if I was, if my whole lever to get results was being high vibe, think of how detrimental that would be and think of how pressurized that would be and how ironic that then I would not really actually be high vibe because I'd be putting so much pressure to be high vibe all the time. Like it doesn't even actually logically make sense because as soon as you put pressure on an emotional state like that, it's no longer the true emotional state you're even trying to chase in the first in the first point. Um, but it, it's also just it's also just not sustainable. And I think then if that's the whole lever, like, look, if if we create the belief that that's what you need to create results, it just becomes true, right? Whatever you decide is true is in fact true. And that's going to become what you think you need to have to create results. And so in many ways, that can be the very thing that ends up making it harder to create results because there's pressure on a perfect state that doesn't exist. And you have the equation in your mind that when I am perfectly high vibe, then I get X result. And so then unless you are perfectly high vibe, right, you're creating the construct that then I can't have this result. And that itself can actually be really challenging. And that can create a belief set, a mindset that makes it harder to create the very things you're intending in the first place. Let me know if that makes sense, but let's actually dig into. So what is what is that number one factor that determines sustainable? Sustainable is the word. I feel like I'm on a tear about this. The masterclass we're doing next month is all about sustainability and reoccurring revenue because sustainability is your friend. I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have a sustainable business and reoccurring revenue versus like high highs and low lows. Um, I promise like that that's really great for your nervous system regulation as well. But the number one factor that determines sustainable long-term success that everyone can cultivate. This is a mindset. This is a mindset that actually science, data, research, studies show us is actually linked to your success. And you're gonna you're gonna be like, like, what? Really like him? Um, but hang with me here. And that's grit. Grit is a mindset. And if you've never heard the term grit, I'm surprised. You probably are new to me because it's one of my favorite words, and I feel like I talk about it quite a bit. But maybe we haven't talked about it recently. But but grit is a it is a term that is defining the passion and perseverance for a long term goal. And I think what's really powerful about grit, and if, if you've never heard this term before, you can look up Angela Duckworth. She's done a TED talk on this. There's there's quite a lot of different different talks around this, but. Um, I think what's really great about grit is it's so much more about playing the long game. It's so much more about your belief set, right? If we think about mindset, your belief that you can have a result, your belief to believe in a long-term goal, to believe in a stretch goal, to believe that's possible, to build, to believe you get to have that, that is so much more important than if you're high vibe or low vibe on any given day, right? If I believe I will have a million dollar one-on-one coaching practice 
and I'm having a crap day, both can coexist at the same time. But if I believe that I have to be high vibe all the time in order to scale my one-on-one coaching practice to a million dollars, right? That's really fucking challenging place to be in. Um, so I think what's really great here is the passion and per- perseverance for a long-term goal. Here what we're talking really about is the belief, the long-term the long-term goal, they are playing the long-term. And when, as soon as we add passion and perseverance, right? Those are two beautiful mindsets, passion for what you're doing, right? That's more of your why. Perseverance, continuing to show up even after you get knocked down for a long-term goal. What we're also doing then is playing with this mindset, which I think is so much of what a CEO mindset is, which is I'm going to show up, I'm going to persevere, but I'm also going to detach from the timeline. And I think that is a mindset that can support anyone in business. I think one of the most challenging things, and I think honestly, one of the reasons we chase high vibe and again, I'm not hating on high vibe. I love I love feeling high vibe. I'm I'm wanting to highlight where having that as the only thing we're cultivating or fixating on that as the secret or the magic pill or the solution or looking for someone to activate us or give us a code for being high vibe all the time, where that can be kind of challenging and, and not necessarily make sense. But um, the, the problem is when we're chasing something like that, it's very short term focus. It's very immediate gratification focus. And the truth, truth is if we're talking about sustainability, if we're talking about long term success, if we're talking about business success, business is a long game. Business is it, it's all about the long game and not that you can't have success in the immediacy, not that you can't have success today. But if we're looking at how do I create sustainability, so I don't just have success today, but I'm making repeat revenue, reoccurring revenue that either sustains me or continues to scale, that is a long game play. That's where grit becomes so powerful and high vibe is really challenging to rely on as a very stable um, mindset to focus on. So questions, reflections, because I know, I I don't know how many people talk about grit. I think grit itself is like a funky sounding word. I always think it sounds like dirt. It has nothing to do with that. But I I think, I think someone in the psychological school realm, whoever they came up with this could have picked a, picked a better word personally, but, but, but it is, it is the whole thing because when you have passion and perseverance for that long-term goal, again, then you could be grieving. You can be sad. You can be frustrated. You can be angry. You can have had a fight with someone. You can be going through a sticky situation with a client. You can be frustrated at your team because something happened. You can be frustrated you know, at all sorts of things. You can be navigating what's going on and maybe not necessarily high vibe in the moment, but still have that belief set, still have that passion, still have that perseverance, still have that commitment, still be dedicated to showing up for that long-term goal. If that's the mindset you have, right? That's more resiliency, that's, that's perseverance that that is going to have you go further than anyone who is only relying on high vibe all day every day i i again i'm not hating on high vibe i'm just looking at what what actually gets us results like that's what i'm really fascinated in what has you feel good what has you actually get results and high vibe feels good if it's not forced and pressurized but high vibe that's forced and pressurized is no longer high vibe that just feels like pressure um Grit is what actually gets you results. Grit is what actually gets you into flow. Grit is what actually feels good long term. Sustainability feels good long term. Right. I don't think I have questions here, but if you do, questions, reflections, throw at me. If not, I'm going to keep keep going. Is our screen? I feel like I have a good camera. I might stop using the camera on this, y'all, because I, I think sometimes the camera actually makes, for some reason, on Facebook makes makes the quality a little funky. Um, so so with this, the other mindset, and then we'll we'll. Um, jump into the other pieces here. But the other mindset that I think is, or part of mindset that I think can be really helpful to understand, like this is what will actually generate results. Like this will, this will help you give, give yourself rocket fuel for any strategy you're using. And again, this is going to be like, great, really, Kim, this is the thing. I thought it was going to be like, have a wealth activated mindset or like, I don't know, chant mantras or I don't know, whatever the thing is. Um, that's intrinsic motivation. And I, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. There's a lot of people who talk about this. Daniel H. Pink has definitely spoken to this in, um, I think in his book, Drive, he speaks quite a bit about this. So I'm just going to touch on it briefly today because we probably have other live streams on this. But it's, it's also mentioned the Medici effect, which I just finished reading. And I loved, by the way, if you have not read it, 
I'm obsessed, you'll probably hear me talk about it quite a bit. Um, side tangent here, because I love my tangents, the Medici effect is all about the intersection of two different disciplines and the innovation and like new ideas, new solutions that can happen and really how when you have two desperate, um, two like very different um, backgrounds or two different ways of thinking or you're taking two disciplines or anything like that and you're combining them together, how that is more powerful than just when we have like our, our very myopic, you know, isolated way of thinking. And it's, again, where innovation, new ideas come from. I think it's such a powerful concept in business and pretty amazing. But one of the things in the Medici effect, because there's a lot of talk there about innovation and creativity, all things as a CEO that I think are really important for us to be thinking about is they, they mention intrinsic motivation as well. Again, this is talk of, talked about in Drive in terms of what motivates people into action. This is, I think, really helpful to also know if you have a team, if you're a leading team, what motivates the team into action. And the intrinsic motivation, just to kind of give the concept here, basically external motivation is when you're motivated by external factors, right? I'm motivated by money or by not getting in trouble or by having a praise and approval or by the number of likes on my posts, right? That is external motivation. Intrinsic motivation is motivation that is more based on your why, that's more based on your passion, that's more based on your purpose, it's more based on, on how you feel. And this is one of the key drivers for motivating yourself into action for the long term. And so when we look at something like grit and the passion and perseverance for a long-term goal and cultivating that kind of mindset, as a CEO to be able to create big results, a big part of, I mean, I personally think, I don't know that Angela Duckworth is talking about this, but I think we're hearing this in other places, is having that intrinsic motivation that I think is a part of the passion and perseverance part of that definition to really cultivate that mindset and to focus on that. And I think what's nice here is, again, you can have a crap day. You can be frustrated. You can be, and I just say grieving because one of my clients is is navigating this right now. I've had to navigate this in my business while still paying a team and paying myself and running my business and supporting clients. And I think we just get ourselves into the hot, such hot water when we don't leave room for things like grief or sadness or sickness or just any of the things that are going to be a part of the human experience. And it's like, I can only get results if everything is perfect as opposed to life is going to keep lifing. And I think it's so much more empowering and it feels so much safer in your business and so much more stable when you can look at things like grit, when you can look at things like intrinsic motivation and use that and see like, oh wait, I can have all of these emotions. I can have all of these so-called non-high vibe negative thoughts um, and see that if I have the core positive belief that I get to have what I want, that I can have these emotions and feelings and still get my results, that my intrinsic motivation, that my grit, like that is actually the key to my success, it's going to be a lot easier to move forward instead of like feeling like you're chasing these highs and lows, maybe feeling a little little manic around things. Um, so um, intrinsic motivation, I think what's really helpful to understand about this too is when you're really tied into the internal drivers for you, it's also a lot easier to stop looking at your business and at results as a pass fail. As a, um, so for example, if you're just tied to, I need to make X amount of money to feel good, external motivator, right? Then it's very easy to get caught in a pass fail mindset, right? I either pass that income goal and then I can feel good, that external motivator, or I pass, I am passing, I'm booking clients, I feel good, now I'm motivated to keep showing up, right? I think many of us have probably been in that place before in business where I, as long as I'm passing that X or I'm getting that external motivator, then I feel good, then I show up, right? Then I can keep getting results. But then everything is hinged on that external result, again, or like on feeling high vibe. Whereas the internal motivator allows for what actually creates really epic success. If we look at what creates the biggest, like the highest level of success, the highest income months, it is not, it does the path, again, seven years of experience, I help clients scale past a million dollars, work with clients at every level of business. And what I can tell you is, that high level of success or any level of success, right? Reach, I, I think making your first six figures in business is the hardest phase in business. Not to create a story for everyone, there's just such a learning curve and so many mindset hurdles as well as strategy hurdles to kind of move through as well as the foundation you're building. And if the whole narrative and the whole way that your mindset is set up that is going to drive you to stay in the game and to get results is driven or linked to external motivation, 
that's really tough. Whereas if we look at the path to the first six figures, to your first multi six figures, to a million dollars, it's going to most likely look like success, fail, 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 success, fail, success, fail, success, 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 fail, right? We're going to have a series of successes and failures and we're gonna have a six series of passes and fails. And I mean, that's all a business, it is a test, right? So if you're driven externally, if you have an external motivation, as soon as you hit those failures, right, there's no motivation to keep showing up. There's there's nothing to feed that grit. There's no passion and perseverance. That perseverance part towards the long-term goal is gonna go out the window. Whereas if you have that internal motivation and drive, then it's not based on pass fail. The pass and fail is a little less relevant. That's more information, that's more data because you're so driven by your passion, by your by your why and then that just all gets to be information that keeps fueling you to show up right and i think that is so important i think in the medici effect um one of the things that they spoke about that i might have mentioned here so excuse me if i'm repeating myself but i think this is just such an important mindset talking about a mindset that's not high vibe right this is but it is, it's, it's, this is more neutral, right? The best mindset in business is a neutral mindset. But I think this is a mindset that is absolutely linked to success and getting big results. And I think it's so helpful to understand is that, and what he was talking about in the book is that people who create the most innovative solutions and have the most innovation, whether that's a new discovery or a new cure to something or a new cross and intersection, a new blue ocean in an industry, in a business also, have a larger quality of a quantity of failures right so it's not just that they're willing to fail they generally have more failures they're just kind of getting up to bat more and failing more often and quicker and faster and so you kind of have to have that intrinsic motivation and you kind of have to have grit to be able to run at failures to get the quantity of failures required for innovation and for success and I, this is why i'm like this is one of those things where i'm like No one probably wants to hear this from me. This is the not so positive period mindset that's actually rooted in confidence and worthiness and trust, right? Because you have to have worthiness. You have to have trust. You have to have confidence. I mean, you don't have to, but these are all mindsets that if you're willing to really run at failure to uh, to new, make that neutral and see like the more the higher quantity of this I have the more data I have and the more likely I am to have innovation the more likely I am to have new ideas the more likely I am to strike gold right like that is actually not very positive sounding but it is rooted in a whole lot of confidence I I think and this is I'll share this next this is what my clients both love and hate me for that I will often challenge clients to do and this is a mindset and this is an approach that gets results that the truth is this requires so much self-trust and this is something that like this is mindset work at at its core it just people don't want to talk about it all the time because it sounds like oh that sounds not high vibe and i would way rather like get my crystals out and i mean i love crystals too i've got one on my desk back here so i'm not hating on that but like it just feels so much better to play in that world and what i will tell my clients and this is the strategy this is like this this helps any of my clients increase their strategy the, one of the reasons my clients get big results is this right here and i tell them to practice giving less fucks and running out rejection right that is not a high vibe sounding mindset that if anything is a neutral mindset, but it is, it is the mindset and it is the approach that helps my clients blow up. And I will say that again, giving less fucks and running at rejection for exactly the reasons we're talking about here. Because when you run at rejection, you allow yourself to get up to bat more. When you get up to bat more and you collect that quantity, not that it's well in some ways it's quantity over quality through we've talked about this before through quantity is how you get quality because you kind of have to get in that practice and in that mode but it's also like that is the mindset that allows you to have like really get tapped into the intrinsic motivation and to tap into your grit versus being so driven by just external motivation and results which is i'm only going to take action if i know this is working i'm only only going to take action and believe in my business if i already see the money coming through the door or if i'm feeling high vibe or right all of these things that are tied to if then all externally driven like that is the place that gets that gets business owners stuck and when you can flip that on its head as as crazy as it sounds that is the thing that will drive results all day every day y'all are very quiet so you're either taking notes or you're cooking dinner while you're while you're listening um but i'd love to know if if this lands for you and and now we're on the replay if this is something you've ever played with before if you've heard this before and you're like oh that sounds horrible 
And if you've, and here's what's important to hear, if you've heard this before and you hear, you feel resistance, what I want to offer, because again, this is why I think the whole high vibe thing can get challenging. And I'm going to keep saying this. I am not hating on high vibe. I like to feel high vibe. However, the idea that that is always the emotion that we're striving for, that's going to tell you what's right or wrong for you can be very confusing because let's say someone's coaching you and they're coaching you around giving less fucks and running out rejection and you feel resistance in your body, right? That doesn't feel good. I mean, who wants to run a rejection? Most of us are not wired to be like, yes, rejection feels so good. Yes, practicing giving less fucks feels so good, right? Most of us are not wired that way, especially I would imagine in this group. And so it would be normal to have a response like resistance, to have a response that is like, oh, hell fuck no. And then just think, well, that doesn't feel good. That's not high vibe. That's my intuition. That's my gut. Like that means that this is the wrong thing to do. And to then retract from what might actually be the very thing that doesn't feel good in the moment, right? Running at rejection might not feel good in the moment. It is for most people, especially when you're first getting practice at putting yourself out there in a bigger way and collecting more no's, as I will sometimes challenge my clients to do, to go fuck some shit up. I sometimes challenge my clients to go suck. I know this all sounds so counterintuitive, but a lot of this is very intentional so they can get out of some of the pressurized mindsets and you know that they're putting on themselves, especially for my high achiever clients. That can, that can feel not so positive, and yet it can be some of the most positive mindset work and action, right? That contrary action that anyone could take to create really big results in their business. Um, again, just in the Medici effect, I think just, I, I like that because he just shows a lot of studies around this. And one of the things that in the Medici effect he shared, and I think this is just so helpful to hear, and I'm gonna read this so I don't screw this up, but Picasso had eight, eight, eight notebooks of drafts for one of his masterpieces. And the quote that was given in the book was to execute past your failures. And really that's the mindset that I encourage my clients to play with, that I wanna encourage you to think about instead of getting so fixated on like, what's the energy I need to feel to be able to get results in my business. And again, like, yes, we're, we're gonna be talking about this more next month. Like I want you to think and be and be in the energy of the next level version of yourself. But sometimes when we're just chasing a feeling and a high, we're kind of missing the actual feeling that it means to be a CEO, that it means to be someone who is making larger sums of money. And sometimes that is not high vibe. It's executing past your failures. It's giving less fucks, right? It's running at things head first and being willing to get rejected, being willing to sit in that discomfort or being willing to neutralize that and just see where's the data in this? How can I learn from this? And how can I get up to bat again until I get the results I want? And and this again, I think is just one of the reasons, this is one of the things I said in the forum, like this is what no one wants to tell you about coaching and the truth about coaching that I happily will and that I proudly will. And I think one of the benefits of coaching or at least good coaching is it's really fucking uncomfortable. And usually coaching is not going to leave you feeling high vibe all the time. I was just talking about this with a client today. We were talking about her renewing and one of the conversations we were having and I was just seeing her in some of the sickiness that was coming up around the vulnerability of working with the same person long term who is, you know, going to challenge you and maybe not just coddle and give what feels high vibe in the moment and really instead encourage you to stretch, really encourage you instead to play with your grit and with your intrinsic motivation and with giving less fucks and with running at failure and with moving through resistance, that can be challenging. I think I said this on our live, last week's live stream, that can be confronting. I think that is also why it is so powerful and why I keep investing in coaching myself, why many of my clients have worked with me for three, four years and continue to renew. I think I have a 90% or something like that renewal rate, at least for the first time of renewals. Because I think that's also like, this is the mindset work. This is the way support can really help you to get bigger results faster. Not that it's about the timeline, but you have to think if you're getting up to bat, if you're running at rejection, if you're getting the support to hold you in the discomfort that can feel like that can come up with rejection and you're just running at that faster and faster and faster it's inevitable that you're also going to have success faster and faster because remember we're talking about this path to success is pass pass fail pass pass fail pass 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 fail 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 right like 
that is just going to be the nature. So the faster you can run at those failures, the faster you're going to also collect those successes. And I think that's where coaching is. It's kind of like the truth no one wants to say, like, that's really what, what coaching is holding you through that or encouraging you to run at that. I think sometimes we think it's just going to be cheerleading or like, I don't know, I'm on calls, like, like, I don't know, doing something to people's energy. Of course, my clients are shifting their energy, but a lot of times it's, it's more this piece and this is more the mindset work that is blowing up their business. And what I would say at the end of the day and what I come back to so often myself and that I support clients with is really seeing neutral. Like all of this is looking at like, how can we start to approach this more neutrally? And I, 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 I'm so mindful to give absolutes because I think we just get ourselves in hot water there. And again, I like to feel high vibe, but I really think the CEO mindset that creates the most success for me, that supports my clients the most, really is more a neutral mindset. It's not high vibe, it's not low vibe, it's neutrality. And because of everything we're talking about here, because neutrality is what lets you have grit. Neutrality is what lets you tap into your intrinsic motivation. Neutrality is what allows you to give less fucks and run at rejection and collect those rejections faster, right? Neutrality is what allows you, as they talk about in the Medici effect, to execute past your failure. Neutrality is what allows you to hold yourself when you're having tough emotions, right? And not ascribe meaning to them and make them wrong. If you're grieving, if you're sad, if you're frustrated, right? If you can also practice neutrality and then not say, oh my gosh, I'm grieving. So that means I suck, or that means I can't have results in my business, or I can't be successful as opposed to holding yourself in that, right? That's a neutrality or a self-compassion you can hold around that, that I think is going to move anyone further than trying to chase high vibe all day, every day. Questions, thoughts, reflections, throw them at me. If not, I'm going to share the last piece I really wanted to dive into here that I think is Again, just a a different way to think about mindset and a different way to think about what actually works to get you results in your business and how business actually works. And this is really what psychology can teach us about mastery and success. And I I feel like I'm giving a lot of disclaimers today, but I just you know, I just want to make sure that this is understood in a way that, that serves everyone. I believe in manifesting. I manifest all the fucking time. I do my mindset work every day. I do things to manifest. I I so believe, and I'm manifesting from the standpoint of I believe in the practical science part of manifesting. I think manifesting is, there is a practical element to that. We might do a masterclass on that this year. We've done one in the past. But I also very much believe in, in energy and I very much believe in the universe. You don't have to, not all of my clients do, but I very much believe in that element of that. And I think with that, if this is whether or not you believe in that. If we're looking at what allows you to create big results in business, even if we're looking at this from a manifesting energetic standpoint, right? I want to manifest with the universe. If we look at what manifesting is really teaching us, it is both the energetic components along with how you're meeting the universe halfway, right? You still as a human, if we're believing that the universe is going to support you and bring you opportunities, you still have to look at what are all the aligned actions I can take? What are the things I can do to, again, meet the universe halfway, to speed up the process, to make those opportunities match, right? It is, um, I always love Mike Dooley's triangle exercise. Um, if you haven't heard of that, it is, it's really good. I'll see if I, if someone reminds me, I'll find a link. Um, you just have to tag me in the comments and, and I'll remember I have a link that I can share of his exercise, but it's essentially you draw a triangle and at the top you write your goal. Um, I want to make a million dollars in business, or I want to book my first client, or I want to make six figures in business, right? You put your goal, and then you draw a line down the middle of the triangle on the left-hand side. You write everything possible you can think of in your control to do to reach that goal. And then on the right-hand side, you write everything to surrender to the universe. And I think what's really beautiful about this is, first and foremost, you're seen to to reach any big goal. If you did everything on the left-hand side, it still isn't guaranteed you'd reach that, right? Like, we kind of really do need the support of universe, energy, luck, whatever we want to call it, right? Like we usually need both. But if you look at any half of the triangle, it would be really tough to reach that goal with either all relying on the universe and surrender or all relying on yourself. It really is that bothness. And so that's, I want to talk about our part here, what psychology can teach us about mastering success so that you can inform your role at 
as a CEO and inform how you're showing up so that you can take care of your half of the triangle and then surrender the other part. But I think we just have to play with this and see that if we want to get big results, there is a bothness. It's just most people I find tend to really rely heavily on one or the other. It's either all, what can I do on my half or all, what can I surrender and let go of? And I really want to invite you to see both and to see that's really the CEO mindset. That's really the way to get big results. In my my belief, in my experience, you don't have to agree with me. That's that's what I think about. So the last piece here, and this is this is based in psychology. This is also based on my. This comes back to my acting day. So that's probably twenty years of experience. We'll speak to this being one of the biggest things that can teach you, like that you can leverage for mastering success, and that is feedback. So I'm gonna break this break this down. Um, Feedback is a really key part of deliberate practice and of creating mastery in anything and getting results. It's a part of grit, and I think it's also a big part of what we're doing if you're working with a coach. So the way I think about this is when I was acting, if I went to set and I booked a job, let's say I booked a job on a movie, and I have worked on my role, I've memorized my lines, I've really worked on my part, and I get onto set and... I deliver my scene. If I just do that on my own and there's not a director, there's no one around me, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be whatever it's going to be. If, and this is why there are directors, if there's a director on set and a producer on set who isn't in the scene with me, who's watching from the outside looking in and can watch my performance, but who also not only can watch me, but has the perspective. They're not stuck in the forest with me. They can see the forest for the trees, right? They're not in my head with all the lines and all the things, right? They can just see the whole performance, but they can also see what every other actor is doing from a different vantage point. And they're also really aware of the scene that they just filmed and the scene they're filming two weeks from now and how everything needs to fit together, right? They have a completely different vantage point. They can see the whole big picture and they just have a completely different landscape of things. So if they can then see everything that way, I could do the scene one, I could like do my scene over and over and over again without any feedback and try to give myself feedback, but there's probably only so far I can take myself, right? I think we could probably agree with this. Whereas if there's a director watching me and they have that outside perspective and they can give feedback and I'm allowing myself to hear and receive that feedback, take that direction, do something different, right? I can expand exponentially. I can completely change my performance. I can help elevate the whole project. I can make sure I don't get fired if that's a case, right? There's a lot of benefit from having that feedback and, and then as an actor, being willing to take and receive that feedback. And that right there, that, I mean, that's that's what coaching is all about, I think. I mean, that, that's kind of defining coaching in another land. But that right there, I think, is it is the, like, that is the mindset and that is the willingness and that is the approach that allows for mastery and success in business and allows you to get big results. When we look at deliberate practice, so deliberate practice is a term in psychology. This is a part of grit. Angela Duckworth talks about this in grit. Um, it, and I'm not going to go all into this today, but just to give, um, just to kind of give what the deliberate practice loop is, it, this is what experts do to create mastery, right? If they're using that grit, that passion, that perseverance for a long-term goal, they're developing their mastery. And this is how experts create a fuck ton of success, right? This is the same for all of us in business. If you're looking at Marie Forleo, for example, who's been in business for, I don't know, 20 years or something, and you're like, wow, it's so cool. She just had Matthew McConaughey on her podcast and she's doing all this cool stuff. Like, I want that too. And we break down what is some of her mindset? What is some of her approach? Whether she is cognitively breaking it down this way, I would bet you money bet you, bet you money that she's had grit if she's been in business for over 20 years, right? I would bet you that she has intrinsic motivation over external drivers and motivation, or at least a healthy combination of both. I don't know her. I'm just guessing here. And I would bet you that she is really open to looking for, asking for, and receiving feedback and that she practices or she leverages deliberate practice regularly. So deliberate practice is, this is having a stretch goal is a big part of it, right? So a stretch goal might be uh, making a certain amount of money in your business, right? That could be more of that ex- an external driver. It could also be something more performance-based or internal-based. Um, 
part of deliberate practice is looking to improve specific weaknesses. Now, I want to be mindful with this because in business, a lot of times when I'm looking at strategy with clients, we're looking at what are your strengths? How do we double down in your strengths? How do we leverage your strengths? How do we leverage what's working and focus on what's working? Here, we're talking more about the deliberate practice. So it's a little bit different here and looking at where your weakness is and really looking to improve those as a part of your deliberate practice. So for example, let's say within your sales process, you're like, oh, I have a really hard time when it comes to saying my price is owning them and navigating the money conversation and like objections, right? We might still in your overall strategy want to look at how can we leverage your strengths and make sure you have a marketing strategy that leverages your strengths. What's working the best in your strategy? Oh, your Instagram, when you go on reels, that works really well. Great. Let's double down on that. That always brings you calls. And then within your strategy, we might still want to look at how can we deliberately practice and how can we look at where some of those weak spots for you to improve upon those, right? And being open to that. And that might look like getting more comfortable navigating those sticky conversations with people. Right, so this is how you can both leverage your strengths, but also look to improve your weaknesses without making yourself wrong. Right, this is all, all coming from a very neutral mindset, and then part of deliberate practice and what if we're using Marie Forleo as an example, again, I don't know her. I'm just using her as an example because I saw that she had an interview recently, so she came to mind. But I would bet you money, she and any other expert and anyone else who has the big results that maybe you want is then also very happily open to accepting, receiving, hungrily looking for and receiving that feedback. And that like that feedback is what closes that loop and really helps for the kind of practice that leads to mastery and success. I, I know so often in business we hear like the 10,000 hour rule and I always say, I could watch cooking shows for 10,000 hours that would not make me a good fucking cook, right? I could watch free content for 10,000 hours that would not necessarily, I would love know people and I've had people in my life who've probably watched 10,000 hours of content on being a business owner and they want to give me business advice. And my thought is that that does not make you an expert in something because there's no deliberate practice, right? 10,000 hours of deliberately practicing cooking will likely make you an expert at cooking. 10,000 hours of deliberately practicing being a business owner will likely make you an expert at being a business owner. 10,000 hours of deliberately practicing um, making money, right, will make you an expert at that. And I think just seeing that as the mindset and that as the approach that actually creates big results and nothing in there says you have to be high vibe, nothing in there says you have to be perfect, nothing in there says everything works perfectly every time. It's so much about this is grit, right? It's the passion and perseverance for a long-term goal. It's willing to have a stretch goal. It's willing to look at, great, what is challenging for me? Can I improve this weakness? Can I improve what's challenging and sticky? Can I get support around that? It's having the mindset. And like this is the mindset, I, I think, being open to and receiving feedback asks you to have confidence. You have to have a certain level of confidence and a certain level of belief in your certain level of self-trust in yourself, in your business, and in your results to be open to feedback, right? And so this all starts to speak to like, these are the mindsets that give you those big results. We just talked about self-trust. We talked about self a belief. Um, I actually don't think you have to be confident to get results. I think confidence is a gift. I think it is a byproduct after deliberate practice, after you do the thing. I think I, I think waiting for confidence is actually a mindset trap, um, but I digress there. But the self-trust and belief, I think that is absolutely a mindset that you can still be sad or upset or angry and have self-trust and belief that allows you to have grit, that allows you to deliberately practice, that allows you to be open to feedback. And that right there is when you're open to that deliberate practice loop and that feedback, right? If I'm on set, if I'm on set and I'm just doing my scene over and over again exactly the same way, and I'm like, well, I just practiced this scene for three months, but I haven't changed anything. I haven't recorded myself to give myself feedback. I haven't gotten feedback from someone else. I haven't gotten feedback from a director. I've just done the same thing over and over again. That doesn't actually mean that I have necessarily improved or that I'm now a good actress or that I've now done anything to move the storyline forward. All that means is that I've practiced for three months, right? The kind of practice that is going to say, hey, you get a big result. Hey, you get the part. Hey, we now just have a project that's doing really well that people want to watch is if I'm doing that for three months, which gosh, I can't, I mean, unless you're in a play, I can't imagine doing anything for three months, but we'll use that as the example, right? It's doing that scene and every single time 
if I was doing this in a vacuum, recording myself and being like, where are my weakness? where, where are my weaknesses? What feedback would I give myself? Or having a director or a casting director being open to that feedback in business. Right? This is why I literally still work. One of the many reasons I still work with a coach is it's tough for me to give myself my own feedback. I want to deliberately practice. I want to have my stretch goals. I want to look at my weaknesses and I want to have someone give me feedback and keep help stretching me to grow because I know that's how I deepen my mastery. I know that's how I get big results. I know if I just focus on only the surface level, like what feels high vibe all the time, I'm just possibly going to, I'm just going to look at one half of the triangle and not the other half of the triangle that creates big results. So again, I know this is, it's not like, I don't know. I think this is like way less fun and sexy to think about than, than other mindsets. And I, I love all the fun manifesting mindsets as well, but I really want to dig into this today because I, I'm just so interested in you getting real results and sustaining those results. And this is just when I look at all of my clients across the board, these are the things, whether they're labeling them this way or not, these are the things they're doing. These are the mindsets they're cultivating. These are the ways they're thinking and showing up like a CEO. These are the ways that they are navigating their personal lives as well as their business. And all of my clients are incredible and all of them are human. So of course they're going to have different things that come up. Some of them have had, I mean, everyone has had trauma, I think to some degree, capital T or lowercase T, but all of them have different things to navigate. And we really work on seeing they, some of those things they might navigate for a while. And, and, and that's okay that we can navigate, we can work on uh, what is going on emotionally, that we can also have mindset blocks in air quotes and challenges and sticky things come up and feelings that don't feel so good and frustrations and ebbs and flows, right? And we can look at shifting mindset and what we're making things mean. And all of that can be done in service of how do we get back to neutral? How do we look at some of the mindsets and thinking and showing up like a CEO in your business that actually gets results? And that always comes back to, I mean, when I look at a client who's made a million dollars, there's grit behind that. There is intrinsic motivation behind that. There is openness to feedback and that deliberate practice. And there are days that they were mad or frustrated or upset, right? Those are the things I see go into success. What I, I have yet to have a client who's blown up in business, who's just been high vibe every single call. I probably wouldn't have a job if that were the case. So I, I say that to clients all the time when they're, they're frustrated, like, this is why I have a job. This is why I have a job and this is why I will continue to have a job. This is why I continue to pay my coach. So I really wanted to have that conversation today and I hope this is, is helpful here. Did I have anything else I wanted to share around this? Mm, the last thing I think I just wanted to share on the feedback piece actually, and then we kind of already spoke to this, but, but I think maybe just the last piece here that um, I just have a note on that goes back to executing past failure. I think looking at feedback and I think learning, I think there is a learning curve to receiving feedback and seeing that when you're receiving feedback, it is neutral. It is not meant to hurt your feelings. It is not making you wrong. And I think that sometimes is actually the mindset work. It's what are you making feedback mean? Then I think a lot of the work I do with clients is helping them learn and shift their mind to be open to receive feedback neutrally and to see that when you're receiving feedback, if it's not, you did amazing, everything's perfect. If there's feedback that is constructive, that how are we making that mean something that is supporting to them? I find one a very easy and common thing to do, especially for those of you who might be perfectionists and hi, I'm a recovering perfectionist. So I see you, I get you, I am you, right? This is something I've had to work on as well. I think I'm really good at it now, but I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure eight years ago, or maybe before I was acting, I probably had to learn this acting. I'm sure when I started acting and I first got feedback in a direction, in fact, I'm almost positive the first time someone gave me direction, whether in an, an audition or in set, it stung me and made me feel like, oh my gosh, I suck and I'm doing something wrong and this means I'm horrible and this means they don't like me, right? I think that can be very much the perfectionistic mindset. And, and what I want to offer there is, again, this is this is the where the mindset work comes in like the real mindset work of seeing like what am i making that feedback mean i'm making this mean a whole bunch of narratives here a whole bunch of stories here that aren't serving me and not only are they not serving me but this is where this kind of mindset 
blocks you from success because not only is this making me feel like shit, but it's stopping me from being open to hearing and receiving the very feedback that will allow me to deepen my mastery to get the results I want, right? To focus on closing or solving the right problem or gap adjusting things the way I need to to get what I want that's why that becomes important mindset work um not because that's like high or low vibe I mean yes like energy like like attracts like and all of that but I but I promise you there are billionaires out there who are low vibe um like I'm sure we can think of quite a quite a few who are probably famous right so that is more about what is your belief set in terms of what are you setting up as a a belief set in a conditional in terms of what you think you need to have to be able to create money. But in terms of when we're looking at mindset and what kind of mindset work actually supports results, this is more the thing here. When we see, wait a second, if I'm open to receiving feedback and really hearing it neutrally and seeing that as a part of deliberate practice and seeing that as a part of what helps me solve the right problem and get big results in business, And I notice that when I get feedback, I get triggered. I get my feelings hurt. I make it mean something that isn't supportive, that isn't serving me, like I suck, or I'm doing everything wrong, or I might as well quit my fucking business, or this is never going to work, right? That is where, if we're saying like, that's not high vibe, right? It's not the actual energy. It's what are you making that mean? And all of that means it's gonna be harder to lean into the mindset that is supportive, which is be neutral and open to hearing that feedback to actually lean into what's going to get you the results. Because as long as you're stuck in those stories, right, you're you're not able to hear or focus on doing what's going to move you forward. You're just stuck in that hole that you kind of have to solve for first before you can hear the feedback and get those results. And so I think understanding that can be very helpful so that if you're self-coaching yourself or working through things and, and just kind of seeing what's going on, it's like, it's, that is the piece we want to be mindful of. This is where I think coaching can be supportive. And I think this is where just seeing like, what are the like levers that are going to get me the big results? And what are the levers that are just easy to latch onto because it helps me bypass a lot of things that maybe feel stickier and harder, like getting feedback, right? Like the conversation I have with my client today, which is like, it, like the truth is it's just so much easier not to get coached and keep working with the same person and not to have to receive feedback and not to have, um, not to have to look at things to adjust. Like, like, of course, right? It, it would be so much easier when I was acting, if I could just go to set and everyone would just applaud for me all the time. Like, who doesn't want that? Um, and I think in some ways, like it would feel so much better just to pay for classes and programs and places in the acting industry that like just puffed me up all the time. And if I'm looking at, I want to get big results in the acting industry, like yes, to a certain degree, having some confidence and feeling good about yourself is helpful. And at a certain point, like that's just not the thing that's going to get you bigger results. It's probably more likely having the mindset that is grit, that is the intrinsic pers- um, motivation, that is, sorry for that background noise, that is, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? Um, that is able to get open to and hear and receive that feedback that is able to get to neutral instead of super triggered when hearing feedback, right? So that when I'm hearing that direction, I can be like, oh, yes, I get that. Okay, here's what I can adjust. Here's how I can like take my mastery of my craft to another level. Oh, cool. That is what would make this scene be so much better. Oh, I hadn't even thought about doing it that way, right? If I can take that more neutrally, like, that's the mindset. That's the CEO mindset that changes the game. Um, but that can also be a lot more confronting, right? That's, that's, again, going back to the Medici effect and just looking at how can you just be willing to kind of run at use that intrinsic motivation to really collect that quantity of feedback to run at pass fail and to not let that be something that means anything and just to execute past past failure okay so i hope that is helpful for you i hope that is valuable for you now you know all all the secrets to my my client's success and hopefully that'll help you think about how to play with mindset work how to play with your mindset how to play with even thinking about neutrality and 
and looking at your business and looking at what's going to be most supportive from you, both on a mindset side and a strategy side. If you're listening to this, I think I said this last week, um, but I mean this so seriously. I, I, I've been fully booked for four and a half years, so I have limited spots that open up. We are opening up some coaching intensives, and I really love my clients. I really love the work I do, and I really love working with people who are in a place where they are coachable. They're open to that feedback. That does not mean that you don't get prickly around feedback. That does not mean that you don't feel vulnerable. That does not mean that you don't have resistance. That does not mean that this feels challenging. That does not mean that you don't need support around that. That's literally why I have a job. Um, but really, that is one of the, the most important things to me as a coach. I don't care if you've never made a dollar in your business or if you're making $2 million in your business. I'm happy to meet you where you're at. I care about the money you make because I want you to make great money, but that is not a prerequisite to me. That's not a requirement to me. That is not something, again, like I don't, I don't care what stage of business you're at. I'm so happy to meet you at any stage of business. I'm really great and understand the different stages of business. I've helped clients at every stage of business. What I care about with the people that I accept and take on as clients, and I'm just blessed to be in a place where, you know, I get to choose who I work with in, in, in some degree. Um, I'm really looking for, and the people I love to work with are coachable and are really willing to lean in to, you know, hearing some of these things and playing with maybe what all, doesn't always feel so good in the morning, moment, who have that grit, who have that perseverance, who are really committed to the long game in their business and committed to the process and not just instant gratification and not just looking for secrets and quick answers and really are coachable. So if you're hearing this and that is you, I'm looking for you. Like you're who I want to work with because I, I love working with clients long term and those are the clients I know that I can help blow the fuck up and I would love to help you blow the fuck up. I do have some coaching intensives we're opening up and then depending on fit, we may or may not open up some one-on-one -on -one spots. I will drop a discovery call link if you're hearing this and you're like, that is me. And I would really like someone who will sit in with me and who is willing to lovingly challenge me and hold space for me and to give me feedback and to help coach me through my mindset in the way that isn't just plastering positive shit on top of stuff, but that is looking at what am I making stuff mean? Where am I getting in my own way? How can I maybe give less fucks and run at rejection a little bit more and execute past failure so that I can be one of those business owners like Marie Forleo, right? Not that you have to want to be like her, but how, how how can I be supported in a way that's going to really let me think and show up like a CEO to get those big results? Um, I would love to support you. That is what I love to do. That is who I love to work with. If that isn't you, that's also okay. That's why we have free content. Um, but if that is you and that's calling to you, I will drop a link for that and I'd love to hear from you. And then I will be back next week. Oh, I have a fun announcement. I'm like sharing this way at the end. So y'all might not hear this. I'll have to share this again to next next week. I totally forgot. We have a fun announcement. I'm, I'm related to all of this, but I'm going to share this here because I'll be sharing this on Instagram tomorrow. And it feels important to share it in the Facebook group for Instagram because you are my, my OGs here. Um, on Instagram for at least three years, maybe four years, I've been doing bite-sized biz lessons on Instagram stories a couple times a week. I do like a really quick nugget and bite-sized biz lesson. And we are stopping those this week. So I've been doing those again for over three, maybe four years consecutively every week we've been doing those. But I'm stopping those and I'm not stopping them completely. I'm moving them to the podcast because I think that's such a better format for us to have a you asked, I answered episode every week. So starting the week of May 8th, I think is when this will start. So we'll have a couple week lag there. We're starting the week of May 8th. We will be dropping two podcast episodes every week for you. We will have our regular episode where we will unpack one question together to help you tap into your own answers for those unapologetic results. And then we will also have a you asked, I answered episode where I will be answering one of your questions or a client's question. So that also means if you have a question for me, you want me to answer on an upcoming you asked, I answered episode, one of those bite sized biz lessons, drop it for me here. DM me with it. If you're on Instagram, you can DM me there as well. We will have a form pretty soon that, um, you can submit if you want to with your name or anonymously, but if you have anything before, then you want me to answer, drop it for me and I will, as long as it's in my wheelhouse, I'll include that in an upcoming episode. I'm so excited. We've already recorded a couple. 
I feel like it's so fun. I feel like it's a, it takes the Instagram format, but I think this is just an easier format. It just gives me a little bit more room to, instead of talking in three minutes, we're still keeping these super short, 15 minutes or less. Ideally, most of them will be about five or 10 minutes. So just that extra nugget for you to have before you close out the weeks. I want to announce that because I'm super excited about it and so that you know to keep your ears open for that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, now for real, I'm gonna say goodbye to y'all. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you in this group. I appreciate getting to have these conversations with you and I'll be back next week with another topic. Bye.